It's the heart of Osaka's central business district. With a daily ridership of over 1 million people, the Osaka Loop Line has served its city stretching as far back as 1889. In this episode, we're going to go back to the beginning and take a look at some of the history and facts that have made the Osaka Loop Line what it is today. The origins of the Osaka Loop Line can be traced back to 1889, when the Osaka Railway Company opened the first section of line between Namba and Minato Machi stations on the Kansai Line. Tanoji Station was an intermediate stop back then, on the outer southeast edge of the city limits. It would go on to be recognised in 1964 as the first station to open on the loop line and be designated with the 001 station symbol. It would be another six years before the next major piece of the loop line would come into operation, when in 1895 the Giotto line would open covering the entire eastern side of the city. The 7 km stretch would start from Tenoji in the south and cover the entire northern part of the city as it arched its way around to terminate at Umedo, just 200 metres from Osaka Station, which opened in 1874 on the Kobe Line. Four new stations opened on the ground-based service, and the line was served by JNR's 400 series steam locomotive, which were built in the UK and imported by private rail companies into Japan. To kick 1898 off, Sakura no Miya Station would open on the Giotto Line, and the next major expansion would occur with the Nishinaro Line opening for business on Osaka's west side. Also built at ground level, the line would start at Osaka Station and head south to Osaka Port. Fukushima, Noda, and Nishikujo stations would all open on the same day. While a significant portion of the Osaka Loop Line was now in place, there was no straight-through service operating between the Giotto line and the Nishinaro lines, and passengers would have to change trains and stations to continue their journeys around the partially completed and fragmented loop. A year later, Imamiya Station opened on the Kansai Main Line, as the population grew to the south of Namba. The first steps to unification between the two major lines occurred at the turn of the century when Osaka Railways merged with Kansai Railways. In 1890, it became clear that increased freight and passenger movements around Osaka and Omeda Station precincts dictated the need for the streamlining of operations and infrastructure. So the decision was made that Umeda Station would be absorbed into Osaka Station. This triggered the rebuilding of Osaka Station in 1901. The first generation Osaka Station, which stood for 25 years, consisted of a Western-style red brick building, which was two stories in height. The rebuild took into consideration platform realignments of the now merged railway operators and was built 100 metres to the east of the first station location. The second generation station building became an instant landmark in the city. It was designed with a much broader front to cater for tram lines and the gothic style two-story structure was made of granite sporting a two-story atrium in the centre with a steep cathedral-like roof. While the new station supported better passenger connections, the Giotto and Nishinaro lines would still operate separately. 1907 was a year of railway nationalisation, and the Giotto, Kansai Main Line and Nishinaro lines were all absorbed into the new national network under the control of the Japanese government railways. This included all the assets of the former operators such as the depots and the fleet of JNR 400 series steam locomotives. In 1912, Tsurahashi Station would open as a temporary station on the Giotto Line and... If you're enjoying this episode so far, why not consider subscribing or supporting us on Patreon where you can receive some awesome perks like access to Patreon posts and a chance to talk with the community. Links are in the description below. Now back to the episode. 1928 would see another large chunk of loop line infrastructure built with the Kansai Main Line Freight Branch Line opening. It would extend out from Imamiya Station and continue west crossing several rivers before turning south and finishing in Osaka Harbour, 8.4 kilometres away. 1932 would take the Giotto Line to new heights, when elevation works were completed on the eastern line. Morinomiya, Teradacho and Tsurahashi stations would all open for the first time on the elevated section. All the new stations would feature ground level ticket concourses featuring setbacks and ornaments in the Art Deco style, with staircases that led up to the perfectly straight platforms above. The completion of the elevation works would pave the way for the electrification of the Giotto Line in 1933, ushering in a new era of cleanliness and safety. 
Tenochi all the way up to Osaka Station would be electrified, allowing electric trains to be introduced. And for the first time, a city rail loop was considered by Osaka City Planning Committee. However, other priorities would take precedence, such as completing the electrification and elevation works on the western Nishinara line. 1934 would see the Kiha 42000 series enter service on the Nishinara line. Like the 11 meter long 40,000 series before it, it was a diesel powered rail car and it was the largest of its type in use by JNR at the time, stretching 19 meters in length. It would tragically go on to be in a major derailment in 1940, killing 189 people 2 kilometers south of Nijikujo Station. The three car set derailed at 6.55 am and overturned packed with commuters on board. Diesel from its tanks leaked out and soon caught fire in the devastation afterwards. The start of the new decade would see Osaka Station rebuilt again for the third time. By 1940 it would be completed up to the second floor and start to be used. The original plan was to have a five story international style square building completed in time for the 1940 Olympics. The station nor the Olympics would go ahead as planned. While the building's steel frame superstructure would be completed to the fifth floor, it was cut back down again in 1943 to the third floor as the steel beams were salvaged and melted down to support the war effort which was approaching Japanese shores rapidly. One year later in 1941, with the Kiha 42000 series disaster fresh in the minds of the people of Osaka, JNR fast-tracked the electrification of the Nishinarai line which paved the way for direct operation to begin between the Johto and Nishinara lines in 1943. For the first time a passenger could get on at Nishikujo in the west and ride all the way to the southeastern station of Tenoji, covering a total distance of 14.1 kilometers. Two years later in 1945 things would take a turn for the worse when the Pacific War would come to Osaka. During the eighth and final bombing raid of the war, the northeastern part of the city would sustain heavy damage and loss of life on August 14th. The stations and tracks between Kyobashi and Morinomiya stations would be obliterated. It was estimated that 700 tons of bombs rained from the sky that day, dropped by some 150 B-29 bombers killing over 800 people. Kyobashi station was a target, and at 1pm with two trains having just arrived, the station was packed with commuters. Hundreds would never make it out alive as the station took four direct hits. It would be the last day of the war in Japan, with the nation surrendering unconditionally the next day. Rail services would be back in operation on August the 23rd, just eight days later. But the stations and the spirit of the people would take years to rebuild and recover. In the years after the war, completion of the loop became a priority. And in 1956, construction of the final purpose-built section of the line commenced. The final 2.6 km elevated link would stretch between Taisho and Nishikujo stations in the city's southwest. It would take 5 years to complete the 2.6 km section, finally closing the loop and absorbing part of the Kansai freight line all the way to Imamiya station. However, the line wasn't continuous and people had to get off at Nishikujo station and change trains due to one section of the track being elevated and the other section still operating at ground level. With the completion of the elevated southern section of rail line, Bentencho and Taisho stations would open to the public in the relatively undeveloped southern part of the city. 1962 would see the 101 series enter service on the complete but not yet continuous loop line. The DC electric multiple units were 20 meters long and 2.88 meters wide and they would operate in a six car formation. The rolling stock would be a vibrant orange colour known in the JNR paint catalogue as Vermilion No. 1, or generally referred to as Orange Vermilion. At 8.55am on March the 22nd, 1964, continuous circle line operation of the loop commenced when the final section of the former Nishinaro line was elevated between Noda and Nishikujo stations. For the first time, Osakians could board a train anywhere on the loop and enjoy multiple laps, even getting off at Shin Imamiya Station, which opened in the rapidly expanding south. Two years later, in 1966, Ashihara Bashi Station would open as the second last station to open on the loop line, even though freight services had operated on this section of line since 1928. The distance between Imamiya Station and Ashiharabashi was only 600 meters, making the two stations visible to each other from the ends of their platforms. The end of the 1960s would see the 103 series introduced, 
And just like the 101 series before it, it would sport the now iconic Osaka Loop Orange Vermilion Number no. 1 paint job. The 103 series would go on to be the workhorse for the Osaka Loop line for nearly 50 years, doing the rounds for the last time on October 3rd, 2017. During the 60s and 70s, the city of Osaka experienced rapid growth, and once again Osaka Station was rebuilt for the fourth time. The international box-style station that served for 39 years was demolished, and a new multi-story terminal building consisting of four levels underground and 27 floors above ground would open, which included a massive department store and hotel. Four years later in 1983, Osaka Castle Park Station would open to the public. It would be the 19th station to open on the loop line, and it's situated on the city's east side between Kyobashi and Morinomiya stations. The relatively small and simple station's primary purpose is to transport tourists to Osaka Castle Park, one of the city's main tourist attractions. Osaka Castle Park Station would be the last station JNR would add to the loop line as the rail operator was privatised in 1987, and loop line operation and management would come under the control of West Japan Railway Company. 1989 would see the 221 series enter service on the loop line. The train developed by the West Japan Railway operator primarily serves the Kansai region. Upgrades in 2012 seen the rolling stock receive interior improvements such as new universal toilet access, provision for wheelchairs and flip up seats next to the doorways. 1991 would see the end of an era, when the 101 series was retired after serving the loop for 30 years. With the introduction of the new millennium, Old rolling stock would be repurposed to the loop line in 2005. The 201 series would be transferred from the Keihanshin line, another line operated by the West Japan Railway Company. The trains would also be painted orange vermilion number no. one and be upgraded with LED information screens in 2014. Just over a decade later in 2016, the 323 series train would be introduced on Christmas day featuring a festive LED display. The three-door commuter train would replace traditional four-door vehicles in an effort to promote lineup riding. The driver's cab instrument panel would replace traditional dials and indicator lights with a clean glass cockpit-style console, consisting of two forward-facing touchscreens and one additional touchscreen to the right. 2019 would see the 201 series retire from the loop line after a relatively short 14 years of service. And a year later in February 2020, testing of driverless train technology using an 8-car 323 series commenced. Rail operator WestJR is anticipating a labour shortage in the years ahead as the Japanese population ages. It hopes to alleviate the labour shortages and improve safety through the introduction of autonomous technology over the next 20 year period. Tests were conducted at night when no commercial services were in operation on a 4.2 km section of track between Osaka and Kyobashi. And finally, it's expected that the loop will play a pivotal role in 2025 when Osaka hosts the World Expo for the second time. The projected visitor count to the city during this period is expected to be 28 million people, which the loop will be heavily relied upon to move the millions of guests around the city's tourist hotspots over the course of the six month event. Okay guys, that was the Osaka loop line. It took 80 years from first tracks to continuous loop line operation. Perhaps you've had the pleasure of riding the loop and have an interesting story to tell. I'd love to hear it in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button. Please consider supporting us on Patreon, where you can get access to the time slip for this episode. The link is in the description below. Okay guys, I'm Mike, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.